Hey, I'm currently at $128,000 a month in profit. My goal is to get to 167K a month in profit. That would take me to $2 million a year. And this video series, these daily updates are more or less me showing the behind the scenes of how I'm getting that done. So um, I talk strategy, I talk a number of things. Let me just start really quickly with my progress over the course of the last, I don't know, 12, 24 hours, whenever it was since I last made my video. So instead of me doing this uh, in a service called Excaladraw, which is just sort of what I've been doing up until now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a Google Sheet and then I'm just gonna store all the stuff daily in said Google Sheet. I'll go daily YouTube statistics. And then uh, I'm just gonna have a little thing that shows the difference between yesterday. So realistically, I have my main channel, then I have my Instagram, then I have my daily updates channel, right? And it's abundantly important to me, and really I, I think most people um, that are on these platforms, <clears throat> to basically have some measure, let's actually um, change this, to have some measure of how much they've grown or improved in the last day, and then to look at it all the freaking time. So I just crossed 2 million views with my main channel, that's good. Let's go to my sub count. Looks like I've gained 217 in the last 24 hours. So actually, let's do one more column. We'll go at date. And then because I'm separating everything else by two, might as well go like this. So today is February 8th, 2025. Maybe Feb 8th, 2025. I want this to be like a date format. Um, anyway, 2025-02-08. There we go. Main YouTube channel is at uh, 47,575 subscribers. Instagram channel is at 9,382 subscribers. And my daily update channel, I just checked, it's at um, 31. Basically what I'm gonna do is tomorrow, okay, February the 9th, 10th, 11th, whatever, um, I'm gonna show the difference between the two. So basically right down here, I'll take um, C2, sorry, C3 and subtract it by C2. That'll give me the difference basically every day. So let's hypothetically pretend that I grow at, you know, 300 subs, I'll have a difference of 300. And then I'll probably find a way to like concatenate that with a plus sign. So I see if I'm going up, if I'm going down, I'll do the same thing here and I'll do the same thing here. Let's just say I'm at 10,000 tomorrow and let's say I'm at like 34 tomorrow, okay? This is just how I'm gonna track this stuff moving forward. It's just a lot easier uh, for me to do this than what I was doing before. So with that all over and done with, why don't we move to the most important part of, or one of the most important parts anyway, um, why don't we just do some some real quick q and I think that's what a lot of people like. So uh, I yesterday received this great comment from Thomas Fortool. I hope I'm saying the name right, Thomas. He said, what's your advice for personalized LinkedIn outreach when just starting out, as outlined in a previous video? With a little social proof of work and accomplishments, is a LinkedIn connection viable? Obviously, cold emailing with a personalized loom remains a strong option, but since contacting through multiple platforms is ideal, I just wanted to hear your take on it. Also, another question regarding Instantly as a cold email service. I've used it before to warm up inboxes, but I figured that I could simply email from the inbox directly or with make automations. So yeah, good question. Instead of using Instantly. In the long run, once I establish an agency, I see the need for easy use, but to start as lean as possible, do you recommend Instantly where to manage email campaign with make automation suffice? So just to make my life a little bit easier, and of course to standardize as I like doing, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this. And we're just gonna paste it right over here. And I don't know why it's so small. Looks like I blacked out some of it. But yeah, what's my advice for personalized LinkedIn outreach when starting? Um, is a LinkedIn connection viable? Uh, yeah, just to answer your question, Thomas. Um, yes, LinkedIn connection is viable. It's very viable. But needs to be personalized, like hella personalized. So the way that I see it is highest ROI way to personalize nowadays is like a Loom video. Because, you know, think about the bandwidth of a Loom video versus like, you know, a bunch of text. Like a bandwidth of a Loom video is, you know how like a picture is a thousand words? Well, a video is 24,000 words per second, basically, assuming we're at 24 FPS. Loom might even be higher, 30 or 60. So the bandwidth that you are able to give across is, as personalized is a lot higher. And if you're good at what you do, um, I personally think there's like a multiplicative relationship between like the bandwidth of a medium and then, you know, the value, assuming that like you, you give it. Um, yeah, equals like, I don't know, the conversion rate or something. Assuming that like you're, you're good at video, um, the bandwidth's gonna be way higher and assuming the value is either the same or higher that you're giving through video, um, you're gonna have a much higher conversion rate. So I would, I just make sure that I'm a good at it and then I'd hit, um, I'd hit a personalized loom both through email. I'd also go through LinkedIn profile just cause that's the easiest to get through scrapers. 
And then if you have other socials, like some scrapers will give you Twitter or sorry, X nowadays, um, then I do that. If you have like Instagram, I do that. You know, I basically just try and DM them on every freaking platform known to men. Because think about it from my perspective. You just spent five minutes making a Loom video. I just invested five minutes into the 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 documenting of what I'm doing over Loom. I personalized, I've sunk five minutes in. If one platform gives me like, uh, I don't know, 30% chance of it being seen, and another one gives me another 30% chance of it being seen, and this gives me another 30% chance of it being seen, and that gives me another 30% chance of it being seen. Okay, the odds aren't exactly this, but it's basically 1.3 raised to the four. Well, <laughs> okay, no, it's not that. But anyway, there, there's some math that you could do. But basically, um, you know, like if I've already spent the five minutes and we're sunk cost the five minutes anyway, we might as well maximize the probability that I could recoup the 30, uh, the five minutes that I spent every time by adding an additional, you know, certain percentage likelihood. So I don't know, like if initially it's 0.3, so 30%, then after it might be um, 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, it might be f uh, 50%. Then if you go 0 0.5 times 3, 0 0.3, that might be 0 0.66%. And then if you go 0 0.34 times 0 0.3, then it's uh, 76%. So if you do it on all these three, now basically the, the value of your five minutes of, of your time um, has just gone up substantially. You know, the value of this hypothetically is now, I don't know, 6.5 minutes of your time, whereas before it was lower or something. I'm just throwing numbers at the wall here, but um, the point that I'm trying to make is like, there's a mathematical relationship between the probability somebody finds your stuff and then the expected value in like creating it. So that's number one. Um, number two, you're asking about instantly. So yeah, man, you're going to want to use instantly for sure, no matter what, um, instantly or some other cold email service. If you're using make to send out your emails one by one, you know, you're not realistically going to be able to send more than like 10 or 15 a day before you start getting blacklisted. So I understand your hesitation at wanting to use it, but they do have like uh, some cheaper plans, like a $37 a month plan. And you just really don't want to burn your main domain. Sure. You could technically send a bunch of Gmails. And if you're really, really, you know, at the start line here or living in poverty and you don't really have any money with which to make this decision, um, fine. I, I could see you split five Gmail accounts and then go through all that BS make.com authorization rigmarole when you don't have a business email and then, you know, distribute mail across them. But my, my recommendation is to like make a long story short, um, use a cold email service. It'll make everything so much easier for you. Hope that helps Thomas. Great questions. And I'm excited to see where you go from there. Okay, great. So, um, just to give you guys some context on uh, what I did yesterday, I basically went through top to bottom, this great resource that was sent over by one of my previous community members, uh, sorry, um, community strategist basically called Druv. Druv wrote me this big, long churn reduction document. I read it top to bottom. I went through all of the steps and so far I'm done, I think three out of the five things that I decided on doing. So what I've done is I'm obviously aggressively focusing on acquisition. I'm now heavily marketing my guarantee. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of changing my monthly call structure to a weekly call structure for maker school. Um, I'm in the process of gamifying the leaderboards. I'm in the, uh, I have now shown community wins a lot more frequently. Go down to maker school and then you go to classroom. What you see now at, at the end of every month or beginning of every month, I should say, is you see a big list of all the win posts that have happened over the course of the last month, right? So that's pretty sick. Like now we just have a bunch of people that are winning, 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 winning. And you get wins from that month when you start the month. Idea being it'll minimize churn because people see, oh, okay, these are the wins from this month. Oh, th that guy had that win for the next month. There's, you know, the likelihood that I'm going to get these wins is now going up in my mind. I haven't added a video on the cancellation screen, so I will. Um, but I have, um, yeah, I've gone through the vast majority of this. I've added uh, some better copy, I would say, and hopefully just consolidated a lot of that. Um, another thing that I did yesterday was I recorded, uh, so let me just like really quickly do my recap. I added churn reduction. So that was good. Um, and I think we're at like three out of the five. Another thing I did was I recorded 14 Instagram shorts or Instagram reels, I should say. So this is all in the pursuit of making this channel grow bigger and bigger and bigger. I thought that I'd be at 10,000 by now. So sort of misspoke yesterday. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty close probably at 10 K before the end of the day today. 
Um, so, you know, that's obviously a high ROI move. Um, what else did I do? I run an outline for my next YouTube video. I then client management with dental firm. I created a, a VAPI assistant for dental bookings as part of my work there. And also because I've always wanted to brush up my skills there, get good enough to, you know, make YouTube videos on it. Um, I did some N8N N self-learning. And earlier this morning, I had a call with a very bright man, um, Nate Perk is his name. Nate is running a YouTube channel. Nate? Yeah, Nate Herc right here. He's running a YouTube channel similar to mine. He talks about um, N8N, and he's growing substantially faster than I am. I think he's like 21 or 22 or something like that. And uh, yeah, like he just made, I built the ultimate team of AA agents, 144K views five days ago. Guy's blowing up like crazy right now. And we just chatted like, you know, YouTube strategy, um, what we're both going to be doing over the course of the next few weeks or months. I have a, you know, my my inclination is he's probably going to like double his sub count to mine. I'm probably going to remain uh, much more monetized than him, though, just because I feel like, you know, he's sort of at the beginning of his agency and info product journey and, you know, I have a lot more experience there. So I think that we can both mutually benefit each other. Maybe I could give him some strategic advice there and then he could find a way to uh, improve my follower retention or at least like get me jump started in the field of NADN. We'll see. So today I, I actually basically have no, um, I don't have any plans for work uh, just because a good friend of mine is coming over and uh, he's going to be staying with me for the next 24 hours. So unfortunately the strategy section of this document is going to be a little bit lacking. Um, just off the top of my head, let me just double check what I've done here. I'm not going to be able to do this today realistically. I really want to set up download DeepSeek and set it up locally. I, I've yet to do that. I really want to spend $50 a day in retargeting ads. And I have a guy that I've just been um, talking with that might allow me to do that for maker school without me having to actually spend my, scale my um, time investment. I really want to um, send an email to a prospect that's just been waiting for it for a while. Uh, two of them actually, but I've just been very bottlenecked and I've been un unable to do so. And I really want to see how to organize a daily group call or similar. So realistically, like today, I'm probably just going to be sitting back and subconsciously processing those four tasks. Um, the rest of these are sort of administrative. I might also like come come up with some sort of not prioritization scheme, but like matrix by which I can um, rank these. Because right now, just having everything in one to do list makes it really easy to procrastinate on a high ROI task with a low ROI task. I found myself doing that pretty often. So you know, what's my strategy for the next twenty four hours? I don't really have any. I mean, I do usually work very hard on Saturdays. Um, I mean, I already like today. I recorded a video. Like I woke up at like seven recorded a three hour long video that I ended up chopping down to about an hour. I also edited it and I'm going to post it, right? So it's not like I'm not doing anything. I'm doing the daily actionables that I always usually do. I just, I'm not like adding anything on top of that today. Um, so I guess if I could like summarize my, my, my tasks moving forward today is, you know, I've, I've done the vast majority of like the ongoing repeat tasks that make me the money. So I'm not going to do anything major today, just as part of, you know, me hanging out with my friend and so on and so forth. But I'm definitely going to be just gestating, gestating, gestating um, some of those tasks that I've wanted to do for quite a while that just continuously get pushed back. Another thing that's coming to mind is I'm running out of outlines. Like I used to have like 10, 15 outlines ahead of where I am. Right now I only have two. So I'm probably going to have to like sit down and make like a big outline session where I come up with a lot of content ideas or take content ideas from my YouTube comments like I've been doing up until now and then find a way to like convert these into more structured. Okay, like here's what I'm actually going to talk about. Here's a system I'm actually going to build because uh, I find that that's obviously very important for my content to be high ROI. And then aside from that, um, yeah, you know, like I've, I've set up a good, I guess the last thing I'll touch on is I've set up a good structure with my thumbnail designer. Um, I basically just like get the thumbnail and then I drop it in. Um, so I'm not growing it like rocket ship speed or anything. You know, I think my number, my top subscriber day was 12 on this channel uh, a couple days ago. But uh, yeah, we're gonna, if I just can continue doing this over the course of the next like six months, every single day, I mean, I'll probably have like 20k subs before that time period's over. Just a matter of consistency and then the value that I, uh, I drive in the videos. 
So yeah, that's where I'm at today. Really appreciate your time. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be taking and sourcing questions, preferably from this channel, just like I did earlier today with Thomas. Feel free to ask me anything. I'm just going to answer one a day. And uh, you know, if your question is great, then I'll obviously be more likely to prioritize it. Cheers.